Earth Dudes. We are in Colorado right now on our off-grid land and this is going to be about planning the solar system uh, we have on this shed. We have 690 watts of solar and 400 amp hours of self-heating lithium batteries. I do want to preface this by saying this whole build is sponsored by Ampere Time. Ampere Time is a newer company that offers a much better price on batteries than Renogy or Battleborn. You should really check them out. Let's dive into the details now. But the backbone of our whole system was a sponsorship or partnership with Ampere Time. Now, one of the biggest expenses in a solar system is gonna be your batteries. It's the most challenging aspect, the most expensive aspect of building an off-grid, high altitude uh, system that is going to stay up 24 seven during winter. One of the keys to this is these are self-heating lithium ion batteries. What that means is in the morning when the power starts going into these batteries, when all the molecules are still frozen and don't wanna move, they don't wanna accept a the charge, there's going to be some heating elements in the battery case themselves that is going to heat up the battery so that it takes a charge quicker than an unheated battery. Why did I choose Ampere Time? Well, Renogy batteries and Battleborn batteries are crazy money, like crazy money. And when you look at what they're charging, I'm not really sure it's worth it. I looked into Ampere Time because they seem to have the technology that I needed, most importantly, the self-heating lithium, which is gonna be important because, again, this needs to stay up during winter. We're gonna be thousands of miles away, and I really want this thing to perform uh, flawlessly, so hopefully I've designed it correctly. Now the other thing about these batteries is I had to calculate my power needs and then look at the worst possible case, which is probably December or January in most places. I'm gonna put a link down below, but it's gonna look like this. And what it's gonna do is show you your weather uh, on average anywhere in the world. You can just type in a location. It'll tell you not only your average temperature, it'll tell you how many days of the month it's sunny and how many days of the month it's overcast and doesn't get much sun. So what you're gonna to need to do is calculate your daily use of power and then multiply that by however many days you see that tend to be overcast in a row. I looked at the past five years in this area and what I found is that I needed four days of energy storage. That was about 300 amp hours, probably a little more than that, but I was figuring 300 amp hours would do. So these batteries are 200 amp hours each. So that's a total of 400 amp hours. Now, one thing you have to remember is that if you go lead acid, you can only use half of the available power level, but with lithium, a lot of these lithium batteries have built-in battery management systems. You can just use them up. So this should be good for 400 amp hours total. And most of that will be usable. So I should have plenty of power. Fingers crossed. For the actual power creation here, I have some monster solar panels. Now you can buy solar panels from Renogy or any of these other companies that, that sell them. Um, I want to talk about that real quick. They are kind of overpriced. Okay, once you start looking at any decent amount of power, you're gonna find that you can find used panels, commercial panels, way cheaper than you can afford to buy uh, these more consumer grade, smaller 100 watt panels. Um, I paid $100 each for these, and these are 230 watt panels. I'll put the specs right here. Now $100 would get me a 100 watt, 12 volt Renogy panel. Instead, I have 230 watts at 24 volts, actually a high of 29 volts if you want to get real specific. That's the other reason you want to go with commercial panels because what happens is because that voltage of the panel is higher, it's going to perform better than a 12 volt panel. And what I mean by that is in early morning and late afternoon, you're going to need more voltage than your battery system. You can't go the other way very easily, but you can always drop down. And that depends on your, your charge controller. I'll get to that in a second. But basically the gist of it is that if you run 24 volt panels, you're gonna get power when a 12 volt panel wouldn't. Basically get 24 volt panels if you can. I went with a Renogy Rover uh, MPPT charge controller. This is the 60 amp model, which gives me some room to grow. But the real reason I went with this one is it has a 150 volt max input. So with these panels being 29 volts each, and I'm wiring them in series, that's gonna be about 90 volts coming into the charge controller. 
You'll see a lot of these smaller charge controllers have a max input of 100 volts. The problem with that is that cold temperatures, they can actually deliver more voltage than that. And since this is an alpine environment with winter and a lot of sun, the chances of that happening are probably pretty high. So I went with a 60 amp one. Um, they, they actually have some newer ones, but I went with this one specifically because it has an RJ45 port on the bottom of it, which means it can communicate to this. This is real exciting to me. This is Renogy's newest product. This is called the Renogy One M1. And this is gonna be their hub or their backbone to control the entire power system, as well as communicate to a 4G router, which is the other <laughs> aspect of the system. So we have the power storage, which is the batteries. We have the solar panels, the 24 volt commercial ones. We have the Renogy Rover 60 amp controller. And then to control everything and communicate to our network, we have this Renogy One M1, which is, gonna be cool. I think the reason that I went with this thing and the reason that I stayed with Renogy was I'm excited to use their new app and most importantly I can control up to three relays from my phone anywhere in the world. So that means if someone comes on this property I could turn on all sorts of fun things to uh, discourage them from messing with my stuff. This is a very new piece of equipment that came out just a few months ago. There's really not much information on it yet, so I'm excited to see how it does. Most importantly though, this thing communicates with a router. Now I have two routers here. I have this Kudi one, which is an outdoor one you can mount on a post. I also have a Kufi, Kufi model 4G router. I wasn't sure which one would perform better, so I bought both of them and I'm planning on returning the one that I don't like. Thanks, Amazon. So basically, with this system, we will have almost one kilowatt of solar. We'll have 400 amp hours of lithium ion self-heating storage. And then we'll have a communication system that allows me to control things in the shed and on the property from anywhere in the world. And I'll be able to get live data on how the solar system is performing. Now, one of the things that does suck about Renogy is they're basically a walled off garden, um, especially with this M1 system. They want a subscription plan moving forward. I'm gonna try it out. If I don't like it, I can always sell it and swap it out for something else. The other company that I really considered was Victron. They seem to do a little better job at keeping your data free to use so you can use it how you want to with all sorts of open source platforms. And it's really powerful and uh, expandable. So I would say if you're building a house size system, look into Victron. If you're working on something that's more like a shed or a yacht or something that's a little smaller, I'm hoping this Renogy system really works out for me. We'll see. Now, the other thing about solar panels here is that we wanted to mount them on the roof of the shed. There's a couple challenges with that. Um, the roof angle isn't perfect. Hey, Sarah. If you want to see our shed exterior video, click up here. But due south is actually not perpendicular to that roof angle it's over here so already we're losing some efficiency the other thing we really need to be worried about here is there's a lot of snow so we're going to be mounting the panels not straight onto the roof otherwise the snow would just pile up on them and they would be useless so i'm going to show you what we're going to be doing for that basically i have some angled solar panel tilt mounts i picked up these guys these are smy yang Ling. I don't know. Basically, I shopped around a lot to try to save money on solar panel tilt brackets. You can build them yourself pretty easy. Um, but what I found is that once you source the materials, I was looking into metal companies, I was looking into used bed frames, but if you want to stick to aluminum and you want to buy just anodized aluminum L brackets, it's really, you don't save any money trying to do it yourself. Maybe you do on like a huge scale but these were pretty affordable. When you do shop for them, I suggest looking at the thickness of the metal. Some of these companies, they reduce their prices by making it just a little bit thinner than everyone else. And if you are dealing with a harsh climate with snow loads and wind loads, you might find that your solar panels leave your roof. The last thing I wanna talk about before we actually start building this system is how we're mounting it to the roof itself. Now, what I found, again, because of the wind loads, you can't really just bolt those tilt brackets to the roof and expect it to survive. So these are called S5 Protea mounts. Basically, on any metal roof, you have these ridges and they all vary in terms of size and width and height and everything. These brackets have three pieces. 
The brackets and interface of the roof had this little butyl rubber part that's adhesive and they actually glue onto the panel itself. So they'll fit like this. Then you have this other bracket right here, which can either mount like that, or you can flip it up and mount it upside down. You can do, you can do a bunch of stuff with this, but basically the, the really powerful thing is that the fasteners, instead of going straight into the metal, where if you get a wind load, it would pull out, the fasteners are going in at a 45 degree angle. So it's really going to take like an insane amount of force to rip these off the roof. If it were to happen, I think it would take the roof panels with it. And we don't think that's going to happen, right, Sarah? Hope not. <laughs> Here, let me show you a tip. If you take the brush and you go like this, that's like um, Miyagi Do. You can help or you can go away. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing electrical stuff. Okay, thanks. All right, so installing these is pretty easy, actually. Um, I'm just measuring the length of my solar panel. I'm putting the tilt brackets a little bit inboard. They're not gonna be on the very edge of the panel. So they just need to be under 64 inches. I can fit three of them, so we're putting three of them. So these things are like Legos. There's a million ways you can set them up. What I decided to do was to stagger the brackets. You won't need to do that if your ribs are wider, but because these ribs are so narrow, the uh, tips of the fasteners would hit each other. Sarah actually noticed that, so. Thanks, Sarah. Just peel off this uh, little protective covering. Strong like bull. So now that I have the lower mounts in, I just threw a two by four up there and we're gonna try to climb up there and put in the upper ones because it's pretty slippery. So hopefully I don't fall. I am not excited about this. Well, there you go, Protea brackets all installed. Pretty easy. All right, so we still need to insulate and do the wall coverings in here, but I want to get the solar system running, especially to make sure we can get the security system up. All right, I have the rover mounted to the wall temporarily because we don't have insulation yet. The batteries we're going to put down here behind the door. All right, moment of truth. This is what we got going on. We have the muscles right here. We've got the solar panel with the tilt brackets mounted the same width as the mounts. Now what's tricky about this is the width of the mounts are determined by the rib spacing of the roof. Then we have this going on over here because otherwise I don't know how to get these panels up there. So we're going to time lapse it and hope that it works out. All right, well, we have one up. Looks pretty good. Now we gotta do two more. The last one, I have no idea how we're gonna do. All right, round two. Fight. <laughs> I was cutting that aluminum, Sarah. I now have chunks of aluminum all over me, but it was pretty good. Sweet, take your shirt off. Ha ha ha. Working so far. I don't have any wood to knock on though. Up. No, up. I mean, sorry. Towards me. We're in. So far, my stupid idea has worked. So far, one more panel. Did you show right. my good idea? Yeah, Sarah had a really good idea what we're gonna do since once that panel is up there, there's no room for anyone to do anything. Since I bought 
just as much panel as there is roof. <laughs> um, we Literally. mounted we mounted a two by four to this side of the shed with giant wood screws, and then we're just going to use roofing screws once we remove it. Which works because we wanted to add a few more of those anyway. So bonus. Luckily, got the coolest excavator guy ever. Thanks, Dan. He's doing this right before the storms hit, so we should have a good pad one day before we leave. <laughs> In here, we have the solar system almost wired up, although, to be honest, I misjudged the length of wire I needed, and we need to buy some in a few minutes here from some from some solar dude installer. I don't know, today was kind of a disaster. The Renogy controller that I bought. This is the Renogy M11. I'm really not very happy with Renogy at all right now, guys, because this this didn't work at all. So here's Sarah and Wicked. Hey. We got the coolest uh, excavator guy right now <laughs> coming out in the middle of the oh, rain yeah. as the sunset. Our um, contractor is amazing. <laughs> I did get an amazing photo. This is probably the coolest skid steer photo of all time. Good morning, dudes. You have to hook up these solar panels. After a miscalculation with wire length, I found a local solar company that hooked me up with some PV wire. This is the MC4 connector kit that I got off Amazon. I'll put a link down below. But it seems like they're all pretty much the same thing. You just have to crimp these pins on and assemble these MC4 connectors. All right, now we're back inside. I'm gonna install a breaker between the panels and the charger, and then we should see if it works. Moment of truth. Boom, there we go. Getting power. 365 watts, 76 volts. Kabam. Solar system is up and running. Thanks for watching. All right, stay tuned for the next one. Cheers.